Fire in the hole, let's cook some beef short ribs. Stay tuned. So what I got here are some beautiful beef short ribs. Look at those things, man. They're so meaty and beautiful. Uh, and I'm, what I'm gonna do is uh, surprise bang stir fry oil on them. That gives them a beautiful garlic flavor. And it also helps to rub the stick to them. So we'll just get them sort of coated up with these things. Get it all over them. Oh yeah. Now you're talking. Okay, that's enough of that. Now I got some, uh, I usually use like Paul for Doms or maybe Tango Spice, but I decided to go with this off-brand blackened seasoning. It's called Rex Blackened Seasoning. I think my sister got this in Louisiana and brought it to me. So I decided, you know, what the hell, I'll give it a shot. So we're gonna just sprinkle some of that on there. It smells pretty good, I smelled it. And uh, it smells pretty good. We're just gonna get that all over those short ribs. And uh, we're gonna get them on a direct fire for a while. And then we're gonna move them indirect and we're gonna braise them. So strictly speaking, even though this is blackening spice, I'm not really blackening these ribs. I'm just gonna, just gonna hit them on some direct fire for a little while and uh, then I'm gonna move them to a pot, a pot of liquid for braising. So let me get those on the fire and then I'll get my pot out here and I'll show you what we're doing. Stick with me, stick with me babies, this is gonna be good. Stay tuned. Okay, I got my short ribs right on a direct fire and while this is not considered uh, blackening, they are getting some nice cook on them. We're just gonna move them indirect for now. We're gonna get a little bit of a little bit of fire and smoke on them, like that. Get them a little bit of cooked, cook down some of that fat. And we're gonna get them off there, move them indirect, like I said already. <laughs> and then we're gonna get the pot out here and we're gonna make our braising liquid for these. We're gonna braise these, it takes about an hour in the pot to cook, okay? So let me get my pot and I'll show you what that's all about. Stay tuned. Okay, my ribs have got some cook on them, and what we're gonna do now is make a roux. And uh, to make a roux, you need equal parts extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna use a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil in there, and a quarter cup of wandra flour, which happens to be my favorite kind of flour to use when making a roux or sauces or gravy or that kind of stuff. Put a quarter cup of that in there. Then we gotta stir that around. We gotta constantly stir that to make our roux. We gotta cook that flour until it gets to the color of a dark, kind of a dark peanut butter color. Kind of a caramel, color of caramel. So I won't bore you with that, but with the sound of my spoon, I'll bring you back when that's, uh, when that turns the color I want. Okay, my roux is a beautiful dark caramel color now. And what we want to do is, you want to stop the roux from cooking. So we're gonna throw in some veggies. We've got some uh, garlic and celery. And you know garlic is one, and celery is, I mean the uh, one part of the Holy Trinity, the Cajun Holy Trinity, and we got some Yellow bell pepper, don't that look good? Isn't that pretty? Some beautiful colors in there. And we got also a diced onion. We're gonna throw a diced onion in there. We're gonna sweat our veggies down, and I forgot to tell you, something I learned from my buddy Russ over at uh, Smoky Ribs, you gotta season your roux. I forgot to season the roux. I got some slap your mama. We're just gonna season those veggies with that slap your mama. That's all the seasoning I'm gonna put in here. Cause don't forget we got the blackening spice on the ribs. We've got our dark root cooking up and coating the veggies real nice. And we're gonna cook those veggies down a bit. Then we're gonna add some liquid to our braising uh, concoction. Excuse me. What liquid do you think I'll be adding? 
stay tuned. Okay, my veggies have cooked down quite a bit. And what we gotta do now is add some liquid to this that our ribs can braise in. And the best liquid I can think of is beer. And this is a beer that my buddy uh, Rivet Gardner sent me. STL IPA India Pale Ale from Urban Chestnut Brewing Company. And I'm gonna put a lot of this in that pot and then I'm gonna put a lot of it in the pitmaster. And we're gonna get that beer in there. Oh yeah. That's a beautiful IPA. I gotta save a taste for the pitmaster, you know what I'm saying? That's me. Just a taste. That's I'm gonna drink it right out of the bottle. Oh, rivet. I apologize for cooking with that. I should have just drank it. It's really good. Okay, anyway, we got some liquid in our pot. Cooking down. And we're gonna add some uh, crystal hot sauce. A few shots of crystal hot sauce. That's good Louisiana hot sauce. And then we got some Lee and Peron. Worcestershire sauce, one of my favorites. Some of that Lee and Perron, a couple of shots of that. That's delicious. That already looks good. They ain't even got the, ain't even got the meat in there yet. Okay, so speaking of the meat, I got my braising liquid pretty much set. So let's get some meat in there. Let's take these bones and put them in there. Probably gonna have to stand them up because if I lay them down, there won't be room in the pot for everything. So we'll stand them up like that. There you go. Stand up there, ribs. Okay, got him in there. Got him in there. Bear with me, folks. I'll get this done. There we go. Got the ribs in there. Get some more. Got to stand you up because there ain't room in the pot if you're sitting down. You can't sit down on a job on this job. You got to stand up. So let's stand them up. Stand them up in the pot. Barely going to be room in my pot for everything. Okay, get that in there. We got a few more to put in there. I'm going to pack them in there, boy. Pack them in. Pack them ribs in there. Those ribs are going to braise in that liquid and they're going to be falling off the bone tender when I get done with this. And we're not done yet. We got one more thing to put in there. Got to make room for that one big one right there. Let's get him in there. Okay. Yeah, now what we're going to do is put some uh, beef broth in there so that we can uh, get the liquid up, at least up to the level of the, of the meat. You know, because the meat is going to cook in there. It's going to braise in there. That's enough beef broth right there. Okay, so you got the uh, blackening season that was on the uh, ribs already. And you got all that uh, other stuff in there. And all that's got to do now is we'll move it off the hot fire and just let it simmer for about an hour. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll take a taste of that. But let me tell you, while it's cooking, we're going to have a beer. Even though I drank half a rib of beer, that I should have put in the pot, but it's okay. It was good beer rivet, man. Thank you. And uh, yeah, let's come back. And you see that liquid? That liquid is gonna make an awesome beef gravy. You'll see. Stay tuned. It's time to drink a beer, and here's a beer that I've been wanting to try for a long time. This is Guinness Nitro IPA. And the whole story with the nitro is, instead of using carbon dioxide to uh, make the bubbles in the beer, they use nitrogen. And it makes the beer, you can see it's already creamier and uh, creamier and like smoother than the beer with the, uh, oh, look at that. Then beer with the, uh, oh, that's beautiful. Beer with carbon dioxide in it. And it comes in cans, that's the only way you can get it. And it looks pretty good, it's nitro, Guinness IPA, I've had the IPA from Guinness before and it was good. But it's real, uh, it's real milky looking, you see it? See how it's kind of milky? That must be that nitrogen. Let's take a sniff of that. 
It smells like an IPA should. You can smell the hops and the uh, citrus flavor. Only one way to find out, right, Roll? We gotta quaff the froth off it, baby. Stay tuned. Wow, it's very strange. It's uh, very foamy. I don't know if you can see, it's like three quarters foam, then there's a head, and then in the bottom is a little bit of the beer. And it's very smooth and creamy. And that's the nitro. And it's got hardly any uh, alcohol bite to it. And what's the ABV on this? Anybody know? Say it on the can anywhere? Well, it should, but I'm damned if I can see it. Come on, it's got to say it somewhere. ABV, I guess, oh, here it is, 5.8. So for a 5.8 IBV, it's got very surprisingly very little alcohol bite to it. I got to take another swallow of it now that it's kind of settled out a little bit. See that? Beautiful beer. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, it's so creamy. It's funny when you shake it up a little bit, the foam goes like into the beer. So anyway, that's our beer. Uh, Guinness Nitro IPA with nitrogen for a smooth uh, something balanced finish. It, it, is, it makes it smoother, I have to tell you. Okay, so stay tuned. Let's take a look at our short ribs. So my ribs are done. I'm gonna take one. One of the likely suspects over here. Stick him on there, you see how tender that is? Practically falling apart. What we're gonna do is, I made some uh, gravy with that juice that was in that pot. I added some uh, flour to it. We're gonna pour some of that gravy over him. And also, I got some mashies. I'm gonna throw some of that gravy on the mashies. Ah, uh, don't that look good? Don't that look fine? Don't that look good enough to eat? I think I'll eat a piece. What do you think? Let me take a taste of that. Yes, sir, look at that. Look at that meat's falling apart. That gravy's awesome. Look at that gravy. Mmm. Oh, I know. You know, I know I say this every time, but I really hooked it up this time. <laughs> It's good, really good, wonderful. Y'all gotta try this recipe, you're gonna love it. And you know what I always say, right? I always say, if you like this crap, please subscribe. And then I say, if you don't like this crap, go over and see Rivet Gardner. Rivet is a real cool dude. He's cooking up some awesome stuff. I need, I need to wet my whistle. That Nitro IPA still has a head on it after two hours. So take that for what it will. Anyway, uh, go see Rivet. If you don't like Rivet, I know you will. I know you'll like Rivet. Anyway, come back here next week. We may not cook anything good, but I'll bet you we drink a beer. All right, babies, over and out. See you next week.